I have been a truck driver for as long as I can remember. And now I want to tell you a story that happened to me just a few days ago. I was driving from my small town to the metropolis, and I had about 500 kilometers to go. I was alone, so I had no one to talk to that day. The radio that we use among truck drivers is not very good for talking because of the poor radio connection on the road. So I decided to pick up a traveling companion. It was snowing outside, the temperature had dropped from minus to plus, and there was slush on the road. As I was driving through the slush, I noticed a guy with a big bag standing on the right side of the settlement. I slowed down and after driving past him about 25 to 30 meters, I opened the door. As he quickly ran into the cab, I asked him, destination. He pointed to the metropolis, I also had to pass by and asked if I had a place for him, promising good money and all that. I took a closer look at him, neat clothes, nice speech, all in all, a decent guy. Anyway, I said to him, hop in. He dragged his trunk behind the passenger seat and left a small suitcase on his lap. When he opened the suitcase, I saw a small laptop inside. The guy, whose name is Mike, turned out to be a local resident, a 28-year-old programmer doing website design, or more simply, website development. After driving about 200 kilometers, we finally got a cellular signal. And that's when I noticed something strange. He kept calling, introducing himself, Hey, it's Mike. You know the guy. Remember? And then again, Hey, don't you recognize me? Yeah, it's me. All the calls were like that. After the fourth or fifth call, we lost cell service, and we went back to our conversation. I asked what's wrong with your phone. Why doesn't anyone recognize you? But the truth turned out to be simple and trivial. He said I just changed the number on my SIM card. As they say, new life, new number. Of course, his phrase intrigued me, and since we had about 200 kilometers to go, I asked him about it. Taking a breath, he replied, the thing is, I just got divorced without getting married. Really? Is that really possible? I asked. Pretty sure it is, he replied. An awkward pause ensued. Asking about personal things was overkill, so I fell silent. However, the guy broke the silence and said, okay, you can't say it without saying B. So, it was a pretty big story that finally came to an end. I met a girl named Cindy. I was 26 and she was a little younger, just out of college. As time went on, we spent more and more time together and wondered what to do next. Since the institute life, I was working in my specialty. So by the age of 26, I had already accumulated a certain amount of money. At first, it was not enough to buy an apartment, but finally I did it. I bought a one-room apartment, got into a bit of debt, but I had my own space. I moved in with Cindy, and we started living together. Within a year, I had paid off my debts, and we started thinking about getting married. However, I wanted to establish a relationship and make more money so that after the wedding, we could travel and live as husband and wife without poverty. So the wedding issue was put on hold for a while. Cindy's mood changed 180 degrees. The funny thing was that her job brought in almost nothing because the financial security and food was on me. One day our company decided to move our work to a remote basis. After that, our relationship became cat and dog-like. Whereas before I could sit in the office and work on a project until 8 to 9 p.m., now that I work remotely, I can see when my fiancé goes to work and when she comes home. I could tell by the look on her face that my presence in the house made her a little nervous, or maybe not even a little nervous. I started getting fewer orders from work, and we had to tighten our belts for a while. This situation was making her mad, although, to be honest, she was living well. 
So I started giving her less money, saying, Cindy, to save up for a gorgeous and glitzy wedding, you have to stretch your finances, not spend it like water. I'll omit the intimate details of her apparent rejection of me. I will tell you about the beginning of the end. Several times, two to three days apart, she stayed late after work. To my questions about the reasons for this, she answered hostily. The whole atmosphere of our relationship became more negative than ever. Until one day, she just blossomed, cooked a delicious meal and pressed up against me with this question, listen, don't you want your future wife to be the most beautiful and the sweetest in the world? Then give me money for fitness and massage treatments. The nearest fitness center has discounts right now. Apparently, I was too relaxed at night, and that's how it turned out. I gave her money for a season ticket, and she started going to this fitness center in the evenings for two to three hours a day. She started working out very intensely one day, she came home with a bruise on her arm, then on her leg. Be more careful. Maybe you should hire a trainer there? I naively asked her. She declined, saying I do fitness at half strength. It wasn't the sport that caused the bruises, it was the massage. Remember that center I told you about? Well, the massage there turned out to be the best in the city. I wouldn't trade it for anything. As the days went by, our intimate life became more and more miserable. She gave a million reasons, ranging from fatigue after sports to something like that. As time went on, her attitude towards me became the same full of complaints, snorting, and all that sort of thing. One day my back started hurting because I was working a lot at the computer. I made an appointment to see a doctor, but the appointment was only for eight days in advance. To avoid waiting and enduring the pain for a whole week, I decided to go for a massage at the same fitness center Cindy had been going to for a long time. It was a dead end. The receptionist at the gym cheerfully informed me that they don't do any massage treatments and never have. They have dumbbells, soccer balls, etc., but they cannot provide any massage treatments. I thought this was an interesting turnaround, and after searching the internet for other places to get a massage, I went there. When I got home, Cindy was already there. I wanted to ask her something like, do you have anything to say about massage treatments? But I rephrased the question a bit and said, how was the massage? Do you go to the same place? Doesn't it hurt? She replied, it's fine, I go to the same spot. In a fervor, I told her that this fitness center had not had a single massage session since it opened. We had another scandal. A day later, she didn't come home and called me. I've been thinking about what we said to each other. We're going to be fine, but if we want to save our relationship, we need to live apart for a while. I think two weeks would be fine. Wouldn't you agree? I may be a computer programmer, but I'm not an idiot. She had someone, but she didn't want to lose her comfort with me, or maybe it's just fun and she has nowhere else to go. So I called her and she said she went on vacation with her girlfriend and her boyfriend. She also said there would be another man there. The men are there to sponsor the banquet, and these two girls are guests. I replied, okie dokie. Tell the sponsors to be careful about bruising you during this so-called massage. It must be said that sometimes a person has to sink to the deepest depths before they can shoot forward, or more simply put, get kicked. Long story short, I had been meaning to move to the big city for a long time. And that night, I decided that now was the time. I placed an ad for this apartment in the morning, wrote a general power of attorney for my parents, so that if I didn't change my mind, they could sell it without me, and drove to this big city where you're actually taking me. The most unpleasant thing here was, of course, that I had to transport her things to her parents. I barely gave them all her clothes and somehow avoided a bunch of questions. I told them 
that their daughter would tell them everything herself, but hinted that unfortunately it couldn't have happened without a strange man. I decided to hitchhike just to unwind. I don't need a lot of stuff for the first time. 